Well, it's Thursday, and you all know what that means. That means once again, we get to review TNA Wrestling and Ring of Honor. As you know, for TNA, we're only one week away before Sacrifice. Now, we do have a bit of preludes before that. As you know, Eric Young is the number one contender for the TNA World title against Smooth. But he will be teaming with the ABC to take on Moose and his buddies of the system, Myers and Edwards. So we'll see how that goes out. There is a sort of a number one contendership for the spot to take on Jordan Grace for the Knockouts World title at Sacrifice. So anything could happen before that. However, we move on with Ring of Honor. Now, as you know, we are now in the quarterfinals of the uh, Women's World Television title. So we will see who will advance until then. And I'm sure many of you have your favorites. But however, the main event is in fact the custody of the boys. As you know, for a while, Dalton Castle has been demanding a match against uh, Johnny TV. But however, he put him in a bad predicament, saying that he'll give him the match if he puts the boys on the line. So that's going to be a very interesting thing to watch. And then, of course, we cap it up with some news updates. We're going to be talk, uh, giving you guys updates on the promotions, like what events they're throwing out, who's booked, what matches are set. Uh, we do have an interesting signee that was announced for TNA. <coughs> and, of course, some developments we're definitely going to be talking about as well. So let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Ratsa Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, TNA, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J Rod here. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada. Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about various topics such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, factions, storyline, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. We also do real timing news updates to keep you guys on alert what is going on in the world of pro wrestling. We do the Unagi Sayaka Watch and various other cool things on this channel as well. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us. So click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool stuff on this channel as well. But if you like this episode, please give us a like and a like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now, we got all introductions out of the way. So let's begin with our very first review and that is, of course, TNA. Okay, our first review, we have TNA. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the start of this episode, uh, we do have Sacrifice coming up within a week. So, we're going to see what happens before then. Now, let's begin with our first match. We have Mike Bailey versus Steve Macklin. Now, as you know, Macklin has been basically uh, saying all the stuff about Nick Menace. But, however... Uh, Mike Bailey and Trent Seven got in the mix of this because they cannot stand. But however, when it comes to Steve Macklin with his new buddies, the Rascals getting involved, you know that was going to be the real case. But however, Macklin was able to put away Bailey with the KIA. And then he posted out a promo saying that he'd taken out everybody. Now, he thought that the last time when he uh, took, when he, uh, how do I say, put down Nick Menace, that he is not coming back. But however, Nick Menace actually told him, the only reason I'm not there right now was because I'm in Japan. 
and I have the IWGP global title. Now, I wouldn't be surprised with this, but I'll, I'll explain in a bit. He did say that he wants a one-on-one -on -one match with him in sacrifice because he told him, you didn't completely get rid of me. So, but one thing that was really, really interesting, we were told recently on a recent news update that he's going to put his title on sacrifice. Now, I wouldn't be surprised that when we get to sacrifice, that Steve Macklin is going to force him to put that belt on the line because he will not love nothing more than take it away from him. I wouldn't be surprised at that, but we will see that in sacrifice, what happens. Now, at the result of what happened at a no surrender, Frankie Kazarian has been announced that he has been suspended by attacking the referee. But however, he told Gia Miller, who to give a direct message to Santino Morella, telling him, do you think this is going to stop me? So we don't know exactly, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's going to be the case. We know that Kazarian is not happy with the results of what happened losing to Eric Young, but we'll see what happens until then. Now, our next match, we have Laredo Kid versus Jake Something. Now, nothing significant, but we do know, uh, of course, Laredo Kid, he is X Division material. We know that Jake Something has competed in it, but he's never obtained the title. I mean, he's like another version of Josh Alexander. But I had a feeling that this match was going to fall in favor of Jake Something because we know how talented he is and of course he's one of those guys we definitely want to get behind him so he applied the into the void to pick up the win now once again alan angels with his sound check he called in his buddy con well old buddy uh to talk about the situation with him and pco now you probably would think because alan angels is concerned after various interruptions in his show he called security but when the lights went out uh, security was scared because PCO showed up and then Alan goes out of his face telling him you're ruining everything and shoved his face. It became like a matter of a cliffhanger. We don't know what happens then. I mean, you're going to be needing a lot of, of security. But however, the last match of these two guys entangled and no surrender ended in a no contest. So someone has to win in this match. So we'll see where that leads us from here on out. Now, our next match, we have Beaner. He teams up with AJ Francis to take on Rich Swan and Joe Hendry. Now, ever since Joe Hendry got in the face of AJ Francis, he's been making his life miserable. And Beaner, of course, did not like the fact that Joe Hendry spoke up to him, but Rich Swan decided to help him. But AJ Francis seems like he has a keen interest in Rich Swan, but Swan is not interested in his battles. But the problem is this. The only reason he gets involved was because it's like this. I did not join you. I don't want to join you because you think this is what I want. So I know recently he tries to treat this more like, oh, we ha we are black people. We need to stick together. But which one is not like that? He likes to be his own person. That's what matters. But the obvious question is, how will Diener and uh, Francis coexist? And the same thing with Henry, Henry and Swan. But one thing that was really clear is that they were able um joe hendry was able to apply the standing ovation onto diener and pick up the win but one thing does ask me a question is this thing with aj francis and hendry uh it's just the beginning well we'll just wait and see until we proceed even further with tna now as you know decay well it seems like they have the entire women's locker room unnoticed so we'll see where that leads us as well. Now, Josh Alexander, as you know, he had some interesting, incredible matches. It just been revealed that he will have part two with jo with I was saying Alex Hammerstone. That match was pretty great. I think it was. He was about to talk more about it until that douchebag, Dirty Dango, Alpha Bravo, and that big Russian brute showed up, interrupted him like. Basically, it's like he's taking advantage of his time while he's trying to explain how excited that this is part two of the, his match with Hammerstone. But Dango, trying to open up a wrestling school and all this, he's trying to use his interview time as <coughs> trying to promote his wrestling academy, which I think is a real problem. Now, 
As you know, in No Surrender, we do have a brand new X Division champion, Mustafa Ali. He decided to do the inauguration of the X Division. Talk about this, but Chris Sabin, of course, told him what he needed to say. He thinks that Mustafa Ali actually paid the good hands to get involved. But, however, Mustafa Ali told him he didn't need to pay them because they believe in the cause. But he also told him that he could have been him even, even without the help of uh, the good hands. But Mustafa doesn't believe that. And then he took a shot at Mustafa Ali. But luckily, Kushida and Kevin Knight showed up to the rescue. But Mustafa Ali is not happy because, of course... His entire inauguration was ruined. Well, he brought that to himself because, he, because of course, the good hands got involved. So we'll see what happens after that. So there will be a match between uh, Mustafa and, Lee, uh, and Chris Saban, but we'll see where that leads us to. Now, as you all know, Ash by Elegance uh, recently made her debut. But, however, she has been keeping on closely on the Knockouts World title. However... She announced for her second match, like she's acting like it's a big deal. I'm sure many people are like who, who is it gonna be? Well, we just gotta wait and see. Now, as you know, we have a bit of a interesting feud between both Zaya Brookside and Tasha Steeles. Now, these two were put in a match where the winner will take a shot of the Knockouts World Title match at Sacrifice. So basically, as you know, Tasha Steele hasn't forgotten that. Her first tanglement with Zaya Brookside was embarrassing, but she got her redemption from that. But however, Zaya Brookside did not like how the, that second in encounter went on when she used her tights. But however, the match ended in a double countout. So basically, but of course, Jordan, uh, Jordan Grace, who was watching in the back, uh, decided to do something about it. Now, what she does, many people are saying, could this be a mistake or she's just showing up? Well, I don't know. So she decided to have both women in a three-way at sacrifice. So we will see them uh, encountering each other one last time in this match against Jordan Grace. So there's going to be a lot of interesting factors in this three-way match. Now, Rhino, as you know, has a message towards Crazy Steve after what happened last time. So basically, he's telling him that let's make this next match into a no DQ. So... We'll see where that leads us from here now. Now, our next match, we have The System, Eddie Edwards, Ma Brian Myers, and Moose taking on the ABC and um, Eric Young. Now, don't forget, Eric Young is going to challenge Moose for the TNA world title. But one thing that did strike me uh, that I thought of coincidence, there is no match for the tag team titles at Sacrifice. But... What would surprise me is what if they do pin the eight one of the members ABC? It wouldn't matter who would it be, but it would put Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers in a conversation saying, "Hey, we put we pinned you guys. Let's take a top shot." And that's exactly what happened. You probably would think that that was going to be a prelude to that. So they actually did a very interesting combo with the backpack stunner and an elbow drop by Myers and Edwards. But it was Myers who pinned Chris Bay and won the match. So there is a strong possibility we could see where in next week, in uh, a day before Sacrifice, that they would demand a TNA tag team title match at Sacrifice. I mean, anything could happen, but we will see until then. But for right now, I think we're done with TNA. Let's move on with Ring of Honor. Okay, Ring of Honor. Now, what surprises me, this one became like an hour-long episode watching this. But, nonetheless, really good matches and good storylines to talk about. Now, our opening match is, in fact, the ROH Women's World Television title tournament. We're in the quarterfinals. We have Tail Valkyrie versus Queen Aminata. Now, last week, Queen Aminata did state it. That she does not want to face that TV personality, Tail Valkyrie. She wants to tell Valkyrie she has hurt so much. Now, you probably would think, would that be the case? I don't know. But, 
Queen Aminata continues to surprise me, and I think many of you who seen her are being surprised how she has been performing in Ring of Honor. She applied, of course, the headbutt, and it was over right there. So that was really sweet. So I would say Queen Aminata, to me, could be the potential winner of the tournament, but we'll see where that leads us. Now, our next match, we haven't seen this individual for quite some time. We're talking about Mike Seidel, uh, Matt Seidel's brother, the one who does the yoga thing. So, I haven't seen him in a, quite some time. Not since their times during the Daily's Place, but it's great to see him. Not going to lie. But he faces a guy against a guy we know has been picking up wins straight up, showing what he's made of. We're talking about lee johnson so <coughs> you can say that 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 was going to be a very interesting match now we know lee johnson he has been on a roll for the last couple of weeks but the honesty question is can he still build up that momentum well he did until he planted him in a somewhat version of an inverted um ddt you know we're kind of like the scorpion death drop but you're actually uh basically lifting the person up higher and boom just like that so he picked up the win and according to what um the commentators said uh it's now five and no for lee johnson so he's picking up some good wins so but there is a little something interesting someone else is also in that same kind of predicament that leads to our next match uh commander versus blake christian commander as you all know he's an excellent wrestler he is a, a badass high flyer you probably would love the guy and you know that there's going to be a lot of high spine spots when it comes to christian and commander i mean we've seen if you guys are fans of blake christian especially his appearances in in gcw then you guys know what i'm talking about but it only took a shooting star press to pick up the win against blake christian and commander is also in that same predicament as lee johnson so we're gonna i wouldn't be surprised if those two have to face off. But nonetheless, we'll see. Now, Athena decided to put in an emergency memes announcement. Well, this one was kind of funny. Apparently, um, Athena put Lexi under the bus because of her interview towards um, Dalton Castle and all this. But, uh, of course, straight up to business and all this and that. So, you know, I thought it was really funny. One thing that kind of struck me as the board is the putting Lexi under the bus. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if you guys ever put anybody under the bus just for kicks. Now, our next match, we have a surprise visitor coming all the way from Japan. Taiji Ishimori versus a guy named Jacob Watts. Now, I don't know who it is. But to be honest with you, watching this match, you know for a fact. Because if you don't know who Jacob Watts is, especially if there's those who know who he is or... I just don't know who this guy is. But I figured that this match was going to end with Taiji Shimori winning the match when he applied the Border City stretch. And it was over from there. Now, our final match. This one is the custody of the boys match. Johnny TV versus Dalton Castle. Now, let me recap how we got here for this match. During the World uh, ROH World Television Title Tournament, um... Of course, Johnny TV was trying to derail Dalton Castle from ever winning this belt. He felt that this belt is meant for guys like him, but Dalton Castle, no. Now, Dalton Castle has been trying to get his hands on this belt for a long time, and now, when he thought he had ever his grabs, he wants to smash Johnny TV's face, but causing him what should have been his crowning achievement, but it did not. So he, Johnny TV saying that he's not ready for jo for that. So he told him that he'll do anything to get this match. He did not tell him until the, a week later, tell, about a week ago, told him that he wants that he'll put that he'll give him the match if he puts the boys on the line, which puts him in a very, very bad predicament for him. So even though you would think that he'll do it, but at what cost? So. In this case, of course, there was going to be factors of this match. We know that the boys will do whatever it takes to support Dalton Castle. But unfortunately, that wasn't enough because Tail Valkyrie got involved, costing Dalton Castle to lose after 
Johnny TV applied the starship paint and it was over. Of course, Dalton Castle was very, very saddened and broken that he lost. And of course, the boys were dragged by Till. Happy that they took away that the thing that matters to him is the boys. So it was very heartbreaking. But the real question is, what will Dalton Castle do from here on out? Well, I don't know, but we will see. So uh, I think that's pretty much it. What we have with Ring of Honor, I believe it's time for news updates. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to our news update. So we have a lot to uh, to update on you guys with the promotions. Our first one is going to be updates with <laughs> everything in one swoop with Stardom. Now, as you may or may not have heard for their upcoming event in Yokohama on March 9th, Natsu Boy returns. So that's right, she'll be in action and she'll be teaming with her tag partner, Sayuri Onoi, and they take on the debut of Suri and her tag partner, someone who has made appearances in Stardom before. We're talking about uh, Chihiro Hashimoto. So it's kind of interesting. We know that Natsupoi had a challenge with her in her turf in Sunday Girls last year. But Sina, now those who know this or not, uh, Natsupoi and Suri are in fact BFFs. Now, when Suri w left Japan to go to WWE, when she ended up in NXT, Natsupo and her remain in contact since then. So it's kind of interesting that they will be now on the opposite corner of each other. So I'm kind of curious about the whole thing. So let's see how that match progressed. Now, the following day on the 10th in Corican Hall on March 10th, uh, it was announced that Aya Sakura, who we haven't seen her since June of last year, who was out on injury, uh, will be making her return. Now, we do know that Aya Sakura, last time she was in the storyline, where she has issues towards Waka Tsukiyama due to the fact that she called her a bad instructor, which Waka took offense to that, telling her she's a great instructor. But Aya Sakura had a different state of opinion, and the person that was agreeing with her was none other than Hanako. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Waka would try to persuade her to join E, um, EXV, but I do have that distinct feeling that Aya Sakura is not going to join Waka as long as she's in that group, that she might end up with Queen's Quest. That wouldn't be a surprise to me right there. So that's something we could expect. Now, uh, finally, with Stardom, as you know, uh, they will uh, Stardom will be here in the States, more specifically during WrestleMania week in Philly called American Dream. 2024 now the last time they did something like this was back in 2018 now don't know why it was the only time we did saw them i uh, heard that there was something that um that's that they did not like that how things were going i don't know but that's what i was hearing but however they did announce who in fact will be participating for that now it's already been confirmed now, representing stars, we have Mayu Iwatani and Momo Kogo, which, of course, is no secret Momo can speak English. And Mayu, well, she is the top girl. And as for Queen's Quest, we have Azumi uh, representing Oda Tai. We have Starlight Kid and Momo Wanabe. And then, of course, God's Eye, Sudi. And, of course, EXV, Mina Shirakawa, of course, another person who can speak English. So I'm sure there'll be more to come for this particular show. And some of you may question, what about um, Cosmic Angels? Well, that's something we don't know just yet. I mean, I would be surprised if Tam Nakano would show up. We know she was here for the 2018 show, but uh, we'll see where that leads, uh, leads for us on that one. So um, let's keep moving forward. Now, um, as you know, our German promotion, um, what's it called? Oh, yeah. WXW, they will be having their... Their latest um, show, of course, the uh, the 16 karat tournament. Now, it's kind of like the equivalent of a tournament. Whoever wins will have an opportunity of a of a title. So basically, we will see that. Now, they did ma uh, announce a match for the first round, and that is 
I don't know who this person is. His name is Elijah Bloom. But his opponent is someone you guys may know. Most specifically, if you're Japanese, if you're fans of the Japanese wrestling scene, we're talking about Masato Tanaka. So he will be in the first round of this tournament. So I'm excited. I'm sure all of you are excited as well. Now, um, the Crash promotion, if you guys are not in the SoCal area, most specifically San Diego, they announced that uh, Julissa, or formerly known as Ulyssa Leon, will be putting her women's title on the line against four other competitors. Now, I don't know who the, the three of the four have been uh, been shown. I don't even know who they are, truth to be told. But that's going to be interesting. Now, um, as you know, Chaos Lucha Libre will celebrate their 39th anniversary of Blue Demon Jr., um, on the 24th, it was announced for another match. We have Los Charros, more specifically Negro, Blanco, and Rojo, which, of course, translate to Black, White, and Red. They take on Dark Warrior, Angel Suicida, and Cyrus. So that's going to be a very interesting match to to hear about. Uh, and then we have, of course, as you know, I announced for the Tampa uh, show on May 3rd. They announced for, of course, uh, names that will participate. We have Nick Gage, the death ma the death match wannabes, death match royalty, Mance Warner and Bessie, Ellie Catch and Effie. So that's right, they will be part of that. Um, of course, House of Glory has announced another event taking place on Cinco de Mayo, and they're calling it La Casa de Gloria, which means the House of Glory. So what a perfect title. And they did have the Mexican thing right there. I'm, like, excited. Hopefully, I get to see it. But it'll be fun. Now, as you all know, there's a new signee in TNA. And they just mentioned him in, um, of course, on the TN when I talked about him on TNA during an interview. We're talking about Alex Hammerstone. So he is now officially with uh, TNA. So congratulations, Hammerstone. Um I wasn't too sure where he was going to go since he became a free agent, but uh, I'm very excited for him. Now, for some developments. Now, if you may or may not heard, uh, Hijo de Vikingo once again got hurt again, and he is required to have had surgery. So AAA announced that he has had a surgery. But the status of his return and, of course, the the status of the Mega Championship is still un un unknown. We don't know what's, what's the time frame of his return. Or what's going to happen with the Mega Championship? Will they force him to, to relinquish? Or will he have to relinquish voluntarily? Or whatever the situation is. We still don't know about that. So we just got to wait and see what, what AAA decides. Now, uh, Tokyo Shoe Pro Wrestling has announced a brand new trainee who will be making her debut soon on, I think, this coming Saturday. Uh, her name is K uh, Kira Summer who originally is from Australia. So yes, we have a foreigner who's been training in the in the dojo of Tokyo Show Pro Wrestling, and she'll be making her debut on the 3rd of March. Now, our final development, you may have heard about what happened with Maxine Dupree. Apparently, um, fans were booing her for no apparent reason. We I did mention that Rhea Ripley, uh, certain talent were on her defense because... Nobody knows exactly what's going on, but Dave Meltzer actually uh, made some, um, not remarks, but more like explain what he believes is, is going on here. So this is what he had to say about the situation with Maxine Dupree. If you're a wrestler, get mad at the company for putting her in, the, in that position. Don't get mad at the fans. If the fans see bad match, you've got the, the right to... To boo, even if they see a good match, they have the right to boo. Um, there's a line that, um, and now I think we're getting where we're way too sensitive. I'm gonna get ripped on this because it involves women, but ju that's just my feeling. If you're a pro, Jesus Christ, that's what being a pro wrestler is all about. If they say something racial, if they say something badly excessive in this day. In age at, at the arena, fucking shut uh shut them up and yell back at them and tell security whatever. And but just booing someone or saying you suck, 
doesn't cross the line of behavior the fans shouldn't be doing. So Dave Meltzer thinks that WWE put her in a bad position, uh, that she should take her frustrations out of it. I mean, we have seen where people booed for no apparent reason, you know, that sort of thing. We did saw that with Jericho not too long ago. If you guys remember, he was booed for no apparent reason, but that's how it was. So, I mean, Jericho took it like a champ. He didn't need to complain. So just putting that out there. But, I mean, Dave Meltzer does have certain points to this. I mean, we know Naxine Dupreeny is getting better and better, but we'll see where that leads us. But, uh, but yeah. I mean, tell, tell me what you guys think. You think Meltzer is right or he's just ribbing on the women? I don't know. I mean, sometimes people can get pissed at him for saying certain things that are not true or he just take things out of proportion. I don't know. So you guys tell me. But we'll see what happens. But for now, I think we're done with everything, our, our reviews and, of course, our news updates. So it's time to call it a day. Okay. So I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. As you know, we have AEW Rampage. And, of course, we have NXT Level Up. Now, as you know, I haven't reviewed the much recent shows from a All Japan Pro Wrestling. However, I did just found out there is a brand new Ring of um, Noah show that just came around. As they continue with more of the Victory Challenge uh, Tag League. So we will see those as well. That won't be a second priority. <coughs> is possible but if there's anything else we'll just gotta wait and see until then but for now this is the plan of course is nxt level up rampage and possibly noah but as for the all japan stuff i may do those at another time but we'll see but for now we'll just leave things as that but i will see you guys on the next dwz time same dwz channel i must bid all of you adieu so Goodbye, and have a nice day.